Backpacking is the soul of traveling, and along the years I've accumulated some useful tips you might want to think about when planning your own adventure. And so I present to you my ultimate guide for backpacking. Enjoy! Well, hello there, I'm Detroit. I went on a backpacking trip recently, which explains my lack of videos for the past couple weeks. As I was recently exploring Hong Kong and Thailand, I thought about my backpacking experience and that I should share it with you. I've traveled quite a fair bit in my life. I visited more than a few European countries, a couple of places in South and North America, and Asian countries like Japan, Hong Kong, and Thailand. Most of these places I went backpacking. Since I'm an artist, I figured I would draw what my traveling backpack looks like and what I usually bring to roam around the world. I will be focusing on backpacking and all it entails. This implies an independent solo experience or maybe a couple's trip, but not an organized group. No luxury hotel, no suitcase. On the other hand, it's not a survival trip either, so no tent, sleeping bag or machete. Let's say you plan on staying at hostels with shared rooms for no more than a couple's day at the time. You're moving around every other day, let's say. I am also implying that you're only traveling with a carry-on bag. No large luggage, so no knife or dangerous items. All right, the premise is set. Let's begin by talking about the main item, the backpack itself. The one I use for both my travels and my day-to-day -day life is the North Face model router. It's high quality, very resistant, splash-proof, and it has all the pockets I need. North Face, please sponsor me. The large central pocket is for clothing, which I'll get into later. The side pockets are perfect for easy access to a water bottle. Smaller pockets, both inside and outside, are very handy to put sunglasses, hydroalcoholic gel, etc. More importantly, this bag has a slightly reinforced backplate, a chest strap, and a waist strap. This is important, because for a heavy bag, you want to avoid too much stress on your spine, and you want good lumbar support. Additionally, this bag has a laptop pocket, if you're traveling with a computer or a tablet. But yeah, having a good bag fit nicely against your back is really important. As for room, this bag is 40 liters, I believe, which is enough for all the items I will be listing. Next, let's talk about your second carry-on item. In most airplanes, you're allowed two one small suitcase or large backpack, and a handheld item. For this, I recommend a fanny pack. You can keep it on your waist or around your shoulder and make sure all your important items are always easy access in any situation. Put your wallet in the fanny pack, your passport, your keys, even your phone if there is a risk of pickpocketing. Some fanny packs have multiple pockets, like inside or even on the back of it. That is good to put various sums of money so you don't go around flaunting hundreds in cash whenever you want to buy something small. In my fanny pack, I also usually put paper tissues, wet wipes, snacks, headphones, etc. And your boarding pass for easy access while you're in the airport. Talking about the wallet, a seemingly obvious tip I can give you is to remove all your unnecessary cards before your travel. You most likely don't need your cooking club member card. Keep it simple. Another tip, make a copy of every document you bring and keep a printed version safe in your backpack. Do also upload the copies to a drive or send it to yourself in email form. In case you'll lose your wallet, having access to a copy of your documents from anywhere is really important. Now, let's talk money briefly. Cash is often key in most places. If you want to avoid needless costs, don't change your currency before your trip. If you withdraw cash before traveling, change it at the airport on arrival and the change cost will be less. Don't forget also to check with your bank to know the rates you will be charged for withdrawing on location or by paying with your card. And let them know you are traveling and where you are so they don't freeze your card because they suddenly see it being used on the other side of the world. On a similar note, having your passport should obviously be priority number one. Passport, boarding pass, visa if needed, these are a given. And again, make a copy of all of that. More on it later. So far, bag, check. Fanny pack, check. Wallet, check. Let's talk toiletries. While in the airport, keep your toiletries easily accessible in your backpack. You will need to take them out for security. 
The usually recommended procedure is to keep all your liquids and toiletries in a see-through Ziploc bag that's below 1 liter in volume. Each liquid item should be contained within 100 milliliters as well. Don't bring a large bottle of shampoo, even if it's almost empty, you will have to throw it away. The best traveling toiletries in my opinion are the samples you get in hotels, like small soaps, tiny bottles of body wash, etc. If you don't have any, it's fine. Soap and stuff like shaving kits, toothpaste, etc. can be found anywhere around the world, in convenience stores, etc. You don't need to bring everything with you. I would still have a toothbrush and toothpaste though with me, because you might be spending hours in an airport and brushing your teeth feels great in that case. Something you should also have with you is a deodorant. No one likes a smelly traveler. Do not have a spray type deodorant, opt for a roll-on or a stick instead. And as I said, everything should be kept in a large Ziploc bag. Have another couple small ones in there to avoid some spillage. For example, due to the change in pressure in the airplane cabin, my sunscreen bottle half exploded. Thankfully, it was in its own small bag. That's better than having a sunscreen on your toothbrush. With the rest of the toiletries, I would also add a mosquito repellent if you're going to a tropical area. Have a couple of bandages. It doesn't take any room and your blistered feet may thank you. A few Q-tips, your medicine if you need it, and bring with you an elastic hair tie. A hair tie can help tie stuff together or you can use it to keep your rolled clothes tidy, etc. It's a tiny item that can have as many uses as you want. Next, wet wipes. Wet wipes are incredible, be it for washing your face in the airport or your bum if you are on the toilet with no TP. And lastly, bring with you a box of over-the-counter headache pills or anti-inflammatory medicine like paracetamol, etc. If you're going to a country with lower standard water, have pills for your stomach. In case of the so-called deli belly, you want to be able to address it quickly. Finally, an optional item I still recommend is a microfiber towel. Get a small one, like a hair towel size one. If you find yourself drenched, for example, a very small microfiber towel can do the work of a large normal towel and it fits in your fist. Alright, we're done with the toiletries. Use this drawing as your checklist when you pack your traveling backpack. Next, let's get into clothing, which I find is what a lot of people struggle with the most. First tip, quite simple but so space saving. Roll your clothes instead of stacking them flat. It's easier to access without having to redo your whole bag, and you can Tetris the rolls to make the whole thing much denser than having stacks with empty space all around. And you can use hair ties to keep the rolls neat and tidy again. Another tip that is sometimes hard to wrap your head around in practicality is to not underpack. And don't overpack either, obviously. Having the right amount ensures your stuff won't move around too much or get crushed in your bag. If you're worried about not having space for souvenirs or stuff you find on the road, bring shirts you wouldn't mind throwing away or replacing. T-shirt souvenirs surely can take the place of your 10-year-old shirt you never wear anyway. Talking about shirts in general, have not more than 4 to 5 days worth. If need be, you can find a laundromat or wash some in the shower. So like, maybe 3 cotton shirts and 2 technical lycra sort of things. They are easy to wash, take less space and you can easily wear them a couple days if you need to. Because that's the thing, right? Paradoxically, the longer your trip is, the less clothing you need. For a week long trip, you most likely won't do a wash, so you take 7 sets of clothing. But for a longer trip, you will need to wash anyway, so you'll prefer having only 4 or 5. So far, I only talked about t-shirts, but the much better option in my opinion is long-sleeved button shirts. They are more breezy, they can be warmer for the evening, and during the day you can roll the sleeves up, or alternatively use the long sleeve to protect your arms from the sun. Same for the collar and your sun-sensitive neck. For the pants, even if it's not the best style, I highly recommend technical pants, cargo style, with additional pockets. As a plus, find pants that can be unzipped into shorts. With that, you basically don't need any other set of pants. Even if you're going to a hot tropical place, having long sleeves and long pants is important, especially in the evening for mosquitoes, for example. Also, for example, Buddhist temples in Thailand only allow in tourists with covered arms, legs and backs. Socks and underwear. 
Nothing much to say about that, except maybe have one set of additional undies. In the rainy season, you can have wet pants, but wet underwear is a no-no. A bathing suit. That's kinda obvious if you're going on holidays near the white sand beaches of Southeast Asia, but I might as well put it in my list since it's in my travel bag. One of the biggest mistakes you can make with packing is forget cold weather stuff. Yeah, you are going to a tropical country, but trust me, airplane aircon is cold. Also, think about your trip going in and back from your home to the airport. If like me you travel in November, you're gonna go from 30 degrees Celsius before the plane to 5 degrees while you wait for your train at 6am. So have a hoodie or jacket on hand. In the same vein, I recommend an elastic tube style scarf thing. It's good against the cold, the sun, to use as a hat, an eye mask, and it doesn't take any room or weight. Finally, the shoes. I only travel with two sets of shoes. One I can walk in that's quite comfy, like sneakers or skater shoes. In my case, it's Vans, mostly. And then I have flip-flops. Flip-flops can be washed easily. It's the way to go at the beach, and more importantly, if you're in a hostel or something, you want something to wear on your way to the shower or the toilet. Feet fungi are the alternative, so don't forget your flip-flops. Quick tip, unless you have a case of the smelly feet, take your shoes off in the plane. You will be much more comfortable to sleep in long fight, but do keep socks on. So we've done the bags, the toiletries and the clothes. Now comes the most important in my opinion. All the miscellaneous items that will make your life so much better while backpacking. This is the crux of this video, and I have refined this list over a lot of different travels. Let's start with a hat for the sun. Baseball cap, snapback, cowboy hat, whichever fits your style to avoid sunburns on your forehead. And with it, sunglasses, obviously. Have a lock with the number code. You never think about it until you need it. Whether it is to lock your valuables in a hostel lockbox or simply to close shut the computer pocket of your backpack, the lock is the best option. To be fair, in my opinion, hostels with shared rooms and bunk beds are not really the place where your things would be stolen. But maybe it has never happened to me simply because I always have a lock. And preferably a lock with a number combination instead of a key, simply in case you lose the small key. A rain cape. That is optional and for rain seasons only. I prefer rain caves because you can fit your backpack underneath and an umbrella is both larger and heavier. Rain capes are the way to go. Next, let's talk about a universal electric plug. Before you go on a trip, you should make sure your phone or laptop chargers are compatible with the electric sockets where you're going. Or alternatively, you can have a universal plug and never have to care about it. It's really handy if you're going to more than one country also. For example, Hong Kong uses UK type sockets, whereas Thailand has European type sockets. Most universal plugs now come with USB slots, so that's also really handy. Talking USB, have two cables, not just one, just in case. Although you can buy a spare cable anywhere in the world, so it's up to you. An external battery. When you spend the day hiking or roaming in a big city with internet and the position always turned on, your phone will run out of battery. Have a spare one holding a couple of phone charges means you won't have to sit at a cafe for an hour to recharge your phone if you don't want to. And you don't have to bring your universal plug on a day trip, you can leave it at the hostel. A book or a reading tablet. While you wait for hours at the airport between two flights, what's better to pass the time than reading? As for which of the two, it's up to you. A book does not need energy, but it takes space, weight, and only has one story. A Kindle or reading tablet has lots of stories, but it needs to be charged, it's more fragile, and you can't leave it at a hostel when you're done. It's your choice. Hydroalcoholic gel. It's a disinfectant, and you avoid the germs of thousands of people from the handles in a bus or subway station. Keep it in your fanny pack for easy access. For similar reasons, keep a pack of paper tissues or Kleenex on hand. Blow your nose, wipe your bum, attenuate a drink spill, it's always useful. In the fanny pack, you can also put a small notepad and a pen. Before you leave, write on it the important numbers you might be needing in case of emergency. The embassy number, your bank, the medical emergency number, police, etc. For sleeping, earplugs. Maybe even an eye mask if you are light sensitive. 
Planes are ungodly loud, especially if you're seated close to the wings and the rotors. And with it, I might as well throw earbuds because, well, music. Then we have a water bottle or gourd. I should have mentioned that earlier since it's so important. Keep that on the side of your backpack. If the tap water isn't good where you're going, you can buy large water bottles and refill your gourd as you go. Another rather important item that is often overlooked is a medium or large plastic bag. That is for your dirty or smelly or wet clothes. You don't want them mixed with the clean stuff in your backpack. Something you should have and keep in its own compartment of your backpack is a plastic sleeve with copies of your documents. I mentioned it a couple times, so by now you have a printed out copy of your legal documents. To that you can add copies of your boarding pass, train tickets, hostel bookings, everything you might need if you lose your phone or you simply have an empty battery. Keep it dry, keep it safe, it's like a second life. And finally, let's talk communication and being connected. Buy a SIM card or an eSIM if your phone is compatible. You know, internet is a really useful thing during travels. For a couple bucks, you can get a single-use SIM card with like 5 gigs of data for a week. You can get it at the airport for example, or in any convenience store usually. With the SIM card, you can ensure you don't rely on only public Wi-Fi and the likes, and you can text or call anywhere. And obviously, we will end this very long list, drawing and video, with your phone. Again, have a copy of everything on an online drive, in the emails, printed and downloaded on your phone. Other than your everyday smartphone, there are some apps useful to have for traveling. A currency converter is one, so you don't get scammed or something. Other apps like Booking.com or TripAdvisor if you have already planned some steps of your trip. And Google Maps. Whether it is to find a good restaurant around or to figure out which bus to take between two places, Google Maps is a must. Another tip would be to download the offline version of the map in whichever place you are, just in case you don't have Wi-Fi or data. Other obvious good apps are messaging apps like WhatsApp that can work with internet instead of SMS for international communications. And Instagram so you can follow me at the 3 underscore SD. As another quick tip, I would also add having a VPN. If you use public Wi-Fi, a VPN ensures a secured connection. It's also nice when at the end of the day you're in the hostel and you want to watch your favorite TV show on Netflix. NordVPN, please sponsor me, I've been using your service for a while now. Anyway. As parting words, have fun. Don't be scared, enjoy the moment. Don't hesitate to rest a bit, but also don't be tempted to stay at the hostel. Your time is limited and you should make the most of it. Tell me in the comments about your own backpacking experience and if you think I've forgotten anything. This is an ever-changing, ever-improving list and for some destinations you might prioritize some items over others. Like the video and join the other 1175 people supporting these videos by subscribing. I'm Detroit and the world is ours to play in. Bye!